Miami Beach is a paradise of white sand beaches and palm trees swaying in the tropical breeze. Waves roll in and die along the shoreline. Hotels and condominiums stretch for miles along this ribbon of sand. It's a playground for those who want to be seen. But for decades, one particular question, a frightening one indeed, has time and again been raised. Is Miami Beach sinking? So what exactly does that mean? The technical term for it is subsidence. Tiffany Roberts Briggs is a professor of coastal geology at Florida Atlantic University. Subsidence is a lowering of the Earth's surface due to removal of materials below Earth's surface from things like um, removal of material or compaction of loose materials. Sinkholes that open up primarily in central Florida are dramatic examples of subsidence. But in most places where it occurs, subsidence is so gradual, satellite imagery of an area taken over a period of years is about the only way you know it's happening. In the wake of the tragic condominium collapse in Surfside, just north of Miami Beach, that question came up again. A scientific paper published in 2020 indicated satellite imagery showed that from 1993 to 1999, the condominium had been sinking about two millimeters per year. Now, let's be clear, no one yet knows what caused the collapse or even if subsidence had anything to do with it. Blue is the limestone huh? and yellow is the sands. So, and then the sands, there's the pockets in there sometimes as you go further north, it's basically all, all sand. All sand. Gregor Eberly is a professor of marine geosciences at the so University of Miami. So you can compact the sand, but you, have, you don't compact really the limestone. The graphics from university researchers show most of Florida is built on a stable bed of limestone. But in isolated places, sand layers are mixed in. So as you go up to the northern part of Miami Beach, actually, you don't have to go very far. We have a lot of sand underneath. So it's an alternation between limestone and sandstone. So now some of the buildings, when they built the new buildings, they settle a little bit because they had sand underneath. The sand, because it compacts, can lead to subsidence. The problem of that, of course, is once you start sinking and you don't sink exactly like all together, you sort of make cracks and you have structural damage and that is really the problem there. You don't need much to make structural damage. Again, to be clear, Eberly says, the vast majority of Miami and Miami Beach and pretty much all of Florida sits on a solid limestone footing. Of course, because the limestone bed Miami Beach is built upon lies beneath the surface, you really can't see it. But there are places because of the weathering of time where the limestone is exposed. Along the edge of this canal in Miami is one of those places with a limestone outcropping. Professor Tiffany Roberts Briggs. So we are looking at um, limestone. Uh, you can see here that limestone can look very different. So in some cases you can have what's called very fossiliferous limestone. So you can see the different shells that are a part of this particular limestone. You would say then that Miami Beach would not be as stable as, as Miami proper? Well, barrier islands are notoriously not stable. <laughs> they like to migrate. But that has little to do with subsidence. Both Briggs and Eberly say the real concern for Miami Beach is not about sinking. In Florida, I would say subsidence is not our, our primary threat. This is not the major problem here. It's the, it's it's the sea level rise. Five years ago, we came to South Florida, considered ground zero for climate change, for a glimpse of the first blush impacts from sea level rise. Here's what we found. What you are looking at is called sunny day flooding. It's not rainwater, it's salt water coming over sea walls and pushing up through storm drains. Several times a year during astronomical high tides, the water comes up. This is Fort Lauderdale. So you've seen this kind of flooding all the oh, time. Oh yeah, every year. Gets a little worse every year. This is Miami Beach. With so much at stake, Miami Beach moved quickly to hold back the water. 
Massive pumps have been installed in low-lying areas. Some streets and sidewalks have been raised two and a half to three feet. Officials say, for now, it's working, but there's still a lot to do. Seawalls will have to be raised higher, and on Miami Beach, there are 60 miles of seawalls. Jimmy Morales was then Miami Beach City Manager. If we can buy 100 or 200 years to a great community, why not? I mean, you know, um, that's generations of people who can grow up here and, and live here and thrive here and hope that those long-term solutions can be addressed. There's no reason to abandon the short term just because none of us know. 100 years from now, 200 years from now, 300 years from now, who knows what's going to happen to this world? But scientists do know the water is still rising. Professor Gregor Eberly. So the sea level will go up, and it went up in the last 100 years about um, 30 centimeters, about a foot, and it will go up this time probably 45 centimeters or 50 centimeters, nearly two feet probably. And so we will start to encroach on both sides on South Miami Beach and we'll erode both sides the coastline away. And seemingly with every new study or forecast, the speed at which the water is rising gets worse. Well, this is the most worrisome part that it goes faster and faster. So we have a faster rate of sea level rise. That puts tens of thousands of people and billions of dollars in property at risk. According to one climate study, $145 billion in property value lies just three feet above the current high tide line. During the ice age, the actual land area was twice as big as it is. Jim Murley is the chief resilience officer for Miami-Dade County. 50 years from now, 100 years from now, where we're standing, is this going to look the same? No. Miami won't look the same. Doesn't look like it did 50 years ago, 100 years ago. Same going forward. We'll be still, uh, I think, a land area uh, surrounded by water. The water may be higher in certain places, and the land may be raised. Or we've learned to live, uh, we're floating on the water, or we're building on stilts over the water. The county has what it calls a sea level rise strategy, a plan for living in the future with water, including building on higher ground, building on stilts like in the Florida Keys, raising roads and seawalls. We will update the sea level rise strategy and the climate action plan every five years based on real knowledge of what happened and better models of what's going to happen. What are the things you think you need to do more quickly now uh, to fight sea level rise? So there's no one single project, there's no silver bullet or panacea that helps you escape this phenomenon. You have got to have all hands on deck. But there is no putting the genie back in the bottle. Scientists say two feet of additional sea level rise is already baked in. It's coming. And Miami Beach? But um, in the long run, it will eventually flood. The rise and fall of sea level is, Eberly says, a natural event. Every 120,000 years, when the Earth is closest to the sun, the climate is warmer. Then, when the Earth moves farther from the sun, the climate cools. Right now, we should be moving into a glacial period, not record heat. But humans have altered the natural state. Sea level should have peaked about 2,000 years ago. And it did and then went down. And since the Industrial Revolution, we increased the sea level again. Yes, this time we delay the glacial period and we actually increased the heat on Earth and we increased the melting of the ice. The absolute worst case scenario, Eberly says, is unthinkable. Greenland, if Greenland melts, sea level goes up seven to 10 meters. If the whole, all the ice melts as we currently have on Earth, sea level will go up 75 meters. Basically, the coastline in the United States will be somewhere up in Tennessee. Huh? So we will be on the, the Blue Ridge Mountains will be right at the coastline. So the whole Florida will be all flooded. Huh? Urban planners say there are three choices. You can defend, you can adapt, or you can abandon. Miami Beach is still in the phases. Former city manager Jimmy Morales told us five years ago. We're sort of in that race to defend and slowly adapt. That is a prudent strategy. Miami Beach, the jewel of South Florida, can keep its head above the water for now.